Okay guys, let's go ahead and do this guide for a one sample uh, hypothesis test for means. Okay, so first of all, let's just go ahead and read our example. So it says Jordan is out measuring the flow rate from a local dam. The dam is under local water rights. It's required to keep an average outflow of 243,000 gallons per second throughout the month. He suspects that the dam is actually cheating the landowners downstream. So he randomly selects 57 times throughout the month uh, to go out and actually measure the discharge. His findings are provided at the bottom of the question. In order to make sure that he has a really good case against the dam, he decides to test at the 0.01 significance level. Okay, so first things first, let's just get the data into our commander just so it's already there. So we're going to click on our data. We are going to copy the measured flow rate and we're going to go and put it in. Alright, so now we're ready to use to use it. Okay, so the first thing is what type of data are we dealing with? So if we go and look at our data, we can tell that we are dealing with numerical data because we've got our numbers, which is awesome. So we've got numerical and which distribution are we going to be using? Well, since it's numerical, we know that uh, that we are either going to be using the T or the Z distribution based upon whether or not we know the true population standard deviation. And up here we get no indication about what the true population standard deviation is, so we are going to be use the T distribution. So when we come down here for our what equation are we actually going to be using, it will be this guy, our T distribution. And we can come down and say who or like what is the population of interest. And it's going to be, we could, is it the landowners? Well, we're not measuring the landowners. We're not measuring all dams. We're just measuring Jordan's local dam. And we're seeing what is its actual outflow. So the parameter of interest then is going to be the true mean flow rate. And then our question is, is our sample size sufficiently large? Well, let's go see how big it is. So we can just run a quick descriptive on our numerical summaries, just get a few pieces. I don't need this quantile or the interquartile range. And to get the mean, or the standard deviation, the standard error, and the sample size of 57. And we already knew 57 from up here. And so by the central limit theorem, um, well, first of all, this hypothesis testing is going to be using the sampling distribution because we are trying to approximate where the true population mean is. Up here we don't get any indication of what the original distribution is and that's okay because by the central limit theorem our sample size is big enough. So yes we can say the sample size is large enough. Okay when we come on down here to run our hypothesis test we are going to say that it's the mean or mu is what we are hypothesizing of and the claim is that it is 243,000 gallons per second. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And the null hypothesis is always that it's equal to the hypothesized value. And ooh, I grabbed the wrong value there. I want mu. And here he thinks that that the dam is cheating the landowner, so he thinks that it's going to be less than this value. Okay, so the alpha level that we start off with is, since this significance level, it's another way to talk about alpha, we can put as 0 0.01. Okay, and now we need x bar. Now one thing you may notice is that it only gave us decimals out to a couple places. That's because by default it takes seven significant figures. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we actually need a couple more. So we can get a couple more by if we do options digits equals 12. And I'm going to hit enter on this, and it doesn't look like that anything happened, but let me go ahead and just rerun this little code that we ran for our numerical summary. I want to click submit. Oops. Looks like I didn't grab everything. Let's just go ahead and rerun it. I'm going to do a numerical summary. Grab those guys and click OK. And now you see, now we've got 12 significant digits. We've got a lot more decimal values, and so we are good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that value in there, paste it. For the sample size, we know that it's 57. 
For the standard deviation, I can copy and paste this guy for our standard deviation. And for the standard error, I can copy and paste this guy. Okay, so now I'm ready to determine our test statistic and our p-value. So if I'm going to do that, what I can go to is I can go to statistics. I'm dealing with means. I'm doing a single sample t-test. All right, now I've got a couple of options here. So the first thing, the null hypothesis is that the mu is equal to 243,000. I think that the population mean is actually less than that. So I'm going to click on that so that it matches my alternative hypothesis. And I'm going to set my confidence level to 0.99 because my alpha level was 0.01. And now I'm ready to just go ahead and click OK. And so it ran this one sample t-test down here. And let's go ahead and increase the size just a little bit. Okay, so here's our one sample t-test. So the first things first, we've got our t. I'm just going to copy and paste that in. And this little parenthesis, remember, it's the degrees of freedom. And so the degrees of freedom is n minus 1 in this case, or it is 56. Next thing that we want to grab is just our p-value. So we can copy that from our output. And we know that our p-value is less than alpha. Not by much, but by a little bit. 0 0.009, and we had 0 0.01 as our alpha level, as we stated right there. All right, so now we can in fact grab our confidence interval. Now our confidence interval is in fact one tailed. And because we said that we think that it's less than, we're going to put this to be negative infinity. So we've got to put a negative sided that. And we can put up here this part of our confidence interval. And we can paste it in. So going on down to our decision, we would reject the null. We have sufficient evidence to claim that it's less. Now, if you notice, it's not that much less. We only think that maybe 200 gallons per second less, but you know, over a whole month, that's actually quite a bit of water. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this. So what we can say is that we have collected sufficient evidence, T, degrees of freedom 56, with negative 2.43, with our p-value, and alpha is 0.01, to reject the claim that the true mean flow rate is equal to this uh, 243,000 gallons per second, and instead claim that it is less than that. We are 99% confident that the true mean flow rate is in fact somewhere between between 0 and 242,814 gallons per second. I included the 0 here because it's a logical floor, so sometimes in your conclusion it makes sense to put it like a logical floor or a ceiling in there, so I included it here. Uh, but that's how we go ahead and perform our confidence interval and our hypothesis test. Now remember, if we had not found significant evidence, we would say that we have collected insufficient evidence to reject the claim that the true mean flow rate is equal to this 243,000 um, gallons per second. And we don't need to include the confidence interval because the confidence interval is trying to let us know where we think that the true mean is. And if we can't reject the null hypothesis, we just continue under the assumption that, well, the null hypothesis then is in fact correct. Now, remember on these as well, if there is not sufficient data, we just complete the preliminary questions and then we would do the NAs uh, the rest of the way down. And that is, that's how we handle all of these scenarios. So let's go ahead and take a second and just submit our answers and make sure that we did everything all right. And everything looks good. We were able to walk through and get the answers that we were looking for. So just remember the one trick to get our um, significant digits more. We can do that options digits equals 12, and that'll usually extend it way past anything that you're actually looking for. So anyhow, good luck on your one sample hypothesis test for means.